Hey traders, welcome back on the pursuit of wealth for another daily market recap. It's Rod with Pow Group. It is Wednesday, January 6th, and we have a lot to cover today. I'm super excited. We're basically going to talk about the Georgia Senate runoff election results. It just came in that Osof won that. So we're going to talk about whether or not it should, it should you be buying cannabis stocks at this time? Is it time to buy cannabis stocks after MJ absolutely skyrocketed today? And we'll also discuss some upcoming cannabis sector catalysts as well. And I'm going to show you guys some coverage of me dog sledding over the holidays. I went dog sledding in Canmore, which is next to Banff, and also did some skiing in Lake Louise. And that was absolutely a blast. So stick around to the end of the video for that, but make sure to hit the like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this market perspective and stick around and we'll jump right into today's content. All right, welcome back. So jumping into the news and events, if you're new to this channel, we go through a series of news and events and market moving headlines. Then we go through the broader market like the crypto, metals, stocks, etc. Then we go into some individual ticker analysis and some sector catalysts, uh, sorry, some sector coverage. And then I go through a summary of the day and where I see us going into the next day and the end of the week. So we'll look at some News and events. So we had rioters storming Capitol Hill after Trump urges action, halting declaration of Biden victory. So they were basically the Republicans were all going against Trump's uh, going against the Biden victory, saying that they sided with Trump and they had a hearing. And essentially they were trying to certify the victory for Biden. But uh, protesters started to storm. So Congress set to certify Biden's victory as Trump pressures Pence to interfere and Mike Pence actually declined and did not act on any intervening measures. So John Orsop beats Senator David Perdue. I did a video on this earlier today. You can check this out. But essentially, it was on the Democrats winning the the majority in the Senate. And now they, they have majority in the House, the Senate. And if Biden does become president, then they'll have a complete sweep and a Democrat president as well. So that will obviously provide more ability for them to accomplish more. So as you can see, this just came in at 5.08 p.m. That's uh, Atlantic time, so 4.08 p.m. Eastern time. So essentially 12, about 20 minutes ago and just under 20 minutes ago. So Osof wins U.S. Senate runoff in Georgia and that's per NBC. So this could be an interesting day for cannabis tomorrow and an absolute gift if you bought the dip today on that news of the riot and, and the rioting news spoofing the market. So congrats to the bulls who did buy the dip because I think we're going to see a lot of positive catalysts, which I'll go over some of those in just a second as well. But Cuomo calls for legalization, legalizing recreational marijuana in New York. So you can check this out, but essentially goes on to uh, list that, you know, it could bring in a ton of tax revenue. We always know that we always knew this, but if you want to read more on that article, but in the effort of time, I'm going to skip on to the next one. Private payrolls post first drop since April as the situation at hand spreads and hits job growth. ADP says Trump bans Chinese payment apps, including Alipay and WeChat Pay. And we also saw some potential FUD uh, circulating that U.S. considers adding Alibaba and Tencent to China stock ban, sources say. So I mentioned this in my video yesterday, my daily market recap, that you need to be aware of this if you're not aware of the consequences and the and the risks that are associated with your stock. Not invest any more than you're willing to lose. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So that's where we stand in terms of news and events. We'll go through the broader markets. So SPY, SPY did sell off there and got spooked. So we were essentially right at the all-time highs. We broke to a new all-time high. And then we pulled back. So I'll just zoom in here to the five minute on that news. So obviously spooked the market we pulled back about a percent in just about half an hour and ema 12 has been a brick wall as resistance since that pullback but a lot of people might think that the end is near but if you zoom out to the hourly here we're still in an hourly uptrend and bulls hadn't formed an hourly higher low from 369.12 so anything above 369.12 is an hourly higher low and we'll see if we can 
form that hourly higher low. It's going to be about the five minute chart tomorrow. If we can change the five minute trend back to the bulls, we can be confident that the hourly higher low is set and really going to depend whether or not we gap up, gap down, open flat. It could happen either way. Either scenarios could happen. And personally, I don't see any major red flags yet, but I am holding an SPXS position, just hedging some MJ longs and some crypto, which are basically, you know, running hot and seeing all time highs and hundreds of percent moves. So just remaining protective there. So taking a look at the crypto space. So we had that dump here on Bitcoin as well after that news came out about the riots and just absolute monster v-shaped recovery here back to a new all-time high absolutely stunning and just a complete show being put on by the bulls at this point everything's still very healthy at this point we're at an all-time high on bitcoin ethereum saw a nice v-shaped recovery and trying to set a 15 minute higher low here could be a potential 15 minute bear, uh, bull flag same with ltc but not quite there yet ADA still pulling back and Link looking to form a 15 minute higher low as well. XRP, 24 and a half cents, hasn't started its 15 minute consolidation, but likely do and we'll see if it follows its peers. So all time highs back in play. Bitcoin over 36,000, absolutely crazy. Congrats to the bulls. I'm gonna run through the broader market a little bit quicker here today. Uh, DXY still very, very weak and it was trending down there while SPY was trending down, so that was notable that they were correlated in the same direction, uh, but we're still seeing very, very weak bounces. We're still in a monthly bear flag territory that I highlighted on this channel for a while now. We've been talking about it for a while. We do have support down at 88.25 again, which is why I'm hedging my long positions with, them, with some SPXS, which is a 3X inverse ETF for SPY, so a bear ETF. So if SPY goes down 1%, SPX should go up, SPXS should go up by 3%. So IWM closed still up over 4% on the day. So not, again, no major red flags. If we didn't look at the news and headlines, we wouldn't think that there was anything really major or any major damage done on these charts. But IWM straight into, uh, into a new all-time high, still closed the day up over 4%, bouncing off EMA 12 on the hourly, looking for an hourly higher low. And everything's still in full control of the bulls, in my opinion. SMH, notably red today, lost EMA 12, closed below. We do have EMA 26 there as well. QQQ, again, we came straight off the lows. We had a mini higher low there, but no real hourly consolidation. We had support at 305.19, that held. We had a low of 305.98, and we just continuously pulled back. And that is likely due to the Democrats winning, in my opinion, the House, Senate, and the presidency likely going to crack down on big tech and tax of uh, the mega rich, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously, I think tech is going to be hit hard. And we saw that Tesla and Neo got hit hard as well. Uh, but I'll go through the rest of the sectors here. So TAN, the solar sector ETF, up over 8%. Congrats to the bulls there. New all-time high, it looks like, as it continues to favor a Biden presidency and Biden should be favorable for the solar sector, the electric vehicle sector, and the MJ sector, and a variety of others, but those are the main three in my opinion. And I'm choosing the cannabis theme as my choice because it's already beaten up. It hasn't run as much as the tech sector. Tech sector is very overvalued, overbought on pretty much every time frame and long-term time frame, and crypto at all-time highs. Uh, I'm going with MJ and looking to de-risk a little bit from crypto and and stocks but just setting tight stop losses and riding this up silver down over one percent gold down over one and a half percent looking to get the hourly trend changes lots of room to form those xbi biotech still up over two percent on the day xhb up over two percent as well so biotech and home builders etf saw similar gains xle again hourly uptrends Across the board in the energy sector, XLF, the financial sector, could be an hourly bull flag. And still in an uptrend, no red flags. The real estate trust sector needs to change that hourly trend. We're in an hourly downtrend, looking to form an hourly higher low compared to 34.98. A resistance break of 35.39 would change the hourly trend back to the bulls and a confirmed uptrend. 
XLV, very strong. Hourly uptrend hasn't started its hourly consolidation, so that's notable. So if we do see XLV start hourly consolidation, watch for other sectors to potentially money rotate into those and offset SPY weakness. So that's where we stand in terms of the overall broader market. We'll take a look at some MJ sector review here. So some MJ catalysts to be watching. I'll bring this up here for you. I posted on Twitter earlier today. Uh, a friend of mine from Quebec posted and I added to that post as well. But it's something I've we've been covering on this channel for a while now about these upcoming catalysts. So I'll just bring this up here for you guys. Some MJ catalysts to be expecting. Friend, I know posted this today and it's very true. I've been talking about these topics for months in my videos. Don't lose sight on what's to come. So a reminder of the events that will influence this industry. Georgia Senate runoff, which looks to be clenched and swept by the Democrats. They now have the House, Senate and the White House. New York and other US states legalizing cannabis. We saw that from Cuomo today. Safe Banking Act and States Act. I expect that the states and the Safe Banking Act would be approved. The Moore Act would likely get approved first, likely within the next couple of months once the power is shifted, which it should be inauguration on the January 20th date. So likely expected about a month or two after that, the Moore Act gets passed. I could see the Safe Banking Act getting passed sometime within the next three to six months. That would be the time frame that I would allot to it. And improving financials. So Tons of companies like TrueLeave has been even a positive and, and profitable for a very, very long time now. And more companies like Hexo in the Canadian space on a trajectory to being even a positive and soon EPS positive. So we're seeing Canopy, I think they said 2022, they expect to be even a positive. So we're seeing more and more companies, Tilray and Afria merging will likely help their situations as well and access to US markets. We have the Cannabis Act review, so Health Canada reviewing laws and restrictions like advertising and, and dose limits, that, thing, that type of thing, etc. We have the cannabis health products and the beauty industry, more products starting to roll out and the cosmetics, that type of thing. So more applications and use cases for the commodity. Mergers and acquisitions, so this has been a theme lately and we'll, I don't foresee that to slow down anytime soon. And personally, I think it's going to ramp up into next year or into this year in 2021 rather. So also mentioned that Health Canada will be reviewing the Cannabis Act and could add more positive catalysts with the easing of restrictions and laws. Ontario is also looking to permit cannabis infused beverages at venues, events, potentially restaurants. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of positive factors in terms of the cannabis industry going forward and a lot of people are still puzzled why the u.s stocks didn't run as much on average as the canadian stocks and that's because of uplisting it's because of access to major capital markets the nyse the new york stock exchange and the nasdaq so until that changes safe banking act needs to go through it could be six months to a year before we see access to capital markets so that's why i have msos as a holding in my portfolio and access to us msos and the U.S. cannabis sector, which I'll go over in just a second. But essentially, I wanted to share that with you guys real quickly. So we'll go through the MJ sector review here real quick. So we'll take a look at CGC. And you can check out my video from earlier today. I did a little bit more in-depth analysis on uh, CGC and some other names like Hexo. Uh, but I'll go through this real quickly here. Weekly bull flag confirming on CGC. If we were to do a measured move of that weekly bull flag, that would take us to a potential profit target of price target of $40. So we'll see if we get there. We're only $10 off. So from currently where we stand for after a huge close and strong day, it's only about 30% from here. And we're still 100% away from all time highs. So lots of room to go. We have the monthly EMA 12 and 26 crossing bullish first time since all time highs. We have monthly uptrend. We're above EMA 12 and 26 which is the first time since all-time highs as well. So we've reclaimed that level. Again, we're just looking at hourly higher lows. This is still an hourly bull flag. So a lot of people are asking me today, uh, when's a good entry for the cannabis space? And I've been literally highlighting cannabis and why people should start scaling in for the last six months. And it's, it's funny how things work. It takes a lot of hype and momentum for people to really pull the trigger. But this is what you want to avoid is not having a game plan and be ready for these types of scenarios because when the moves happen, they happen fast and hard 
And like this happened here from the high of the day, 31.82, we dropped 7%. And this all happened relatively quickly. And on this drop here, if you're not paying attention and you're paying attention to the mainstream media and you're getting caught up in all this FUD and uncertainty, um, if you look at this chart, we're still very, very bullish. We could potentially set an hourly downtrend here if we lose the low of 3182. So if we lose 3182, that would essentially be a lower high and lower low hourly downtrend. So bulls want to try to avoid that, but we do have a gap here to fill, which is down at 2756. If we do confirm an hourly downtrend, we'll look to that gap fill and a potential bounce around the $27 mark. So that's where we stand in terms of CGC. So looking at the bear list, there was none. So that was quick. Cron up 15%, Tilray up over 13%. Hexo over 13% and then SNDL, APHA, CGC on the bull list. So again, Hexo I mentioned yesterday as well, breaking out of the daily pennant bull. We had a golden cross as well, weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross, weekly cup and handle as well. You can see here from 516, I highlighted this in my video as well from yesterday, but essentially cup and handle, perfect 33% retracement. A measured move on that would bring us to about the six and a half to seven dollar range if we see a resistance break of 532. If we break 532 with follow through convincingly, then cup and handle has been confirmed on the weekly and we'll target the six to seven dollar range. So that's where we stand in terms of Canadian MJ Aurora CEO going on the media here at I believe it was 4 p.m. Eastern, so it should have already been on. The, so yep, up here 4% after hours. So $10.27, we close that 1072 after hours. APHA up big as well on this pump. CGC up, wow, about 60 cents, 1.82%. 1 Hexo up tiny bit here, 492. Wow, back to pretty much the high of the day. So again, this is why I even... I even posted it in the group toward the end of the day today. I said, establish your game plans. If you haven't entered MJ or you're looking to add or scale in or invest for the long term, now's a potential time to be doing so when we see these FUDs and these, these articles that are trying to spoof the market and spook investors. And we're seeing a huge gap up here after hours. Uh, sorry, a huge move after hours. We could be lining up for a gap up tomorrow in Canadian MJ. And again, Canadian MJ likely going to see the brunt of these moves. MSOS, so we'll see if this gaps up tomorrow. I would anticipate a gap up in MSOS personally, but taking a look at the bull list or the bear list, sorry, TAUG, IIPR, CXXI, flat, but only two. So TAUG and T IIPR, likely IIPR down because of the Safe Banking Act going to pass and access to capital. They basically buy leases and sell it back, buy buildings, sell it back to people, lease it back to them, uh, provide them capital that way. And obviously would not be a huge need for that. So look out for a potential top on IIPR. Ian VREO, acreage MedMen up for the bull list. So again, we're seeing these small cap names run a lot more percentage wise than the US MSOs. And that's because the US MSOs have run hundreds of percentile. They're at all time highs and they just don't have access to that capital that you would expect. So up 8% true leave, CL 3.5%, taking a look at Cura, almost 8%, GTII, seven and, almost 7.5%. Seven and so you're starting to get the idea. That's why I've been bullish on Canadian MJ personally. We also saw that hedge funds, and we also saw that investors with over 100 million asset managers or over 13F filings were saying that assets managers with over 100 million in assets were starting to buy Canadian MJ. So we've had all the clues. We had CGC bouncing off the 200 weekly moving average, confirming support. We had it bouncing off the 50 day moving average, the weekly bull flag confirming. What more clues do you need? Smart money knows what's up. I've been saying that for days now. So Nova Mine, we saw a huge bounce as well, up over 20% from the low of the day. Low float, so not surprising there. So true, like I said, a little bit of a bearish uh, candle here on the daily, a uh, little bit of an indecision candle, but we did gap up and we have a gap in the chart at 44.75, but on the hourly chart, we're bouncing off EMA 12, which we've been holding since all the way down here at 39.26.
So we'll see, that'll be the line in the sand. If we lose that tomorrow, we'll look to EMA 26, which is down at 44.30. But personally, like I said from last week and a few videos ago, I was trimming my exposure to individual US MSOs and migrating over, rotating that capital into Canadian MJ. And like I said, I'm pretty much all out of individual US MSOs. I bought MSOS today at the end of the day. And I have a few other positions, which I'll go over here in just a second. Taking a look at MSOS on the weekly, we're above the 10-week moving average down at 33.98. Lots of bull volume here. Today's daily volume was exceeded the average daily volume by hundreds of percent. MACD is absolutely blasting off here. So we do have a gap, like I said, in the chart. But I do want to show as well the holdings in MSOS. So you can see here we have Cureleaf, Top Holding, True Leave, Green Thumb, Cresco, Terrasen, Juicy Holdings, AYR, Columbia Care, Harvest Health, Planet 13. We have Innovative IIPR, Grow Generation, C21. So here's the rest, Charlotte's Web, Acreage, Virio, Green Lane, Indus Holdings, CBDMD, and some other honorable mentions. But essentially, that is how I'm going to limit my risk with US MSOs. So like I said, swinging MSOS on that pullback from today, we got pretty extreme there. So I'm just going to bring up the chart real quick here for you folks. So we did get fairly extreme on that pullback in the markets. So you can see here from the high of the day, we were down about three and a half percent. So and with it being an ETF, that's quite a bit. If we if it was an individual stock, you know, we could potentially see two or three times that percentage move but because it's an ETF like I said huge dollar volume on the day started to scale in and build a position there but huge huge volume volume yesterday was 633,000 shares today was 1.8 million we did set a, a high higher low lower high essentially double topped didn't quite get there but essentially double topped into an hourly downtrend here into the end of the day. Scaled in one order, I will look to potentially enter on a gap fill and a test of EMA 26. And if we do get to hourly oversold, I'll add on that as well. But personally, I don't think we're gonna get there right off the cuff. So like I said, swinging MSOS, Hexo. Hexo being my biggest position, my favorite Canadian LP and stock, most confident position to be honest with you, hedging with SBXS, which is the SPY bear ETF, 3X leverage, and also swinging some Ethereum and some XRP. So I do expect Ethereum to hit all time highs. I'm also, I didn't put it in there, but I'm also swinging some Hive, Hive blockchain, looking for they mine a lot of Ethereum. So looking for that to potentially test its highs and head towards new heights as Ethereum continues to soar and test its all-time highs and blue skies and beyond. So in summary, we have initial jobless claims in the US coming out tomorrow pre-market. We also have Chinese stocks on, wa on watch. Again, I mentioned this yesterday. Make sure to know your risk if you're holding Alibaba or Neo or any of these other 10 cent companies to make sure that you are allotting for that risk and you are okay with everything going to zero if that were the case. So just make sure if you are a little spooked by this, you can always trim, buy it back later. These are the risks that you need to, to be aware of. And personally, when there's a risk of total loss, I just, I tend, I tend to stay away. So personally, I don't hold any Chinese stocks at the moment. So establish your game plans. Are you hedging? Are you buying spy puts? Are you shorting the tech sector? What are your plans? Are you getting uh, SPXS, which is the, ETF inverse to SPY? Are you hedging with puts, with call options? Are you looking to add MJ here on hourly consolidation? Are you adding on five minute oversold? Are you shorting? Or are you, like, what is your game plan? These are all things you needed to, to distinguish and establish this plan now so that when things happen, you already know what your, your plan is. So if we go bearish or bullish, you have a bull case and a bear case. And you're not caught like a deer in the headlights. So all eyes on futures tonight. We're going to need to confirm an hourly downtrend on the S&P 500. So we'll be watching the futures market there. Need to break the low and to new lows and confirm hourly downtrends to be confident that the bears have follow through and momentum going into tomorrow and the rest of the week. So with that, 
Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for another daily market recap. It's Rod with Pal Group. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you tomorrow after market close and congrats to the bulls. So we'll end it here with some footage of me dog sledding and also going to Lake Louise skiing in the mountains in the Rocky Mountains in Alberta during the holiday break over the Christmas holiday. So with that, thanks again guys for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow. You got it, baby. Ha <laughs> ha.